City Council meeting for November 8th, 2021. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America, to the Republic for which it stands, God, indivisible, and justice for all. with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, uh, we move on to roll call this evening. Please remember to state your current location for our roll call this evening. <clears throat> Council Member Dill. Present in the city of South Lyon. Thank you. Council Member Kurtzwell. Present in the city of South Lyon. Thank you. Council Member Kibble. I'm here and I'm in South Lyon. Thank you. Council Member Walton. Present in the city of Gregory. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Richards. I'm present and I'm in the city of South Lyon. Thank you. And who am I missing? Council Member hey. Kennedy. Thank you, sorry. Present, city of South Lyon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm also present at City Hall here in the city of South Lyon. On to the approval of the minutes from October 25th, 2021. I have a, a correction to make. Uh, Councilmember Richards, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On page five of my comment, when I stated, he then stated he recently found out that the Oakland County Health Department shut down the work on Dorothy Street. Uh, he hopes something can develop to get it cleared up and move full project forward. Well, I was wrong. Okay. What actually happened? I misinterpreted the, the information I had received. Eagle is the one that shut the project down temporarily because the Oakland County Health Department, for whatever reason, had not signed the permit that they were asked to sign regarding the job site. Uh, and since that point in time, uh, our friends at HRC have gotten on board and they've uh, got the job going, okay? And it should, should have something coming up by the end of this week. And uh, when it does, you'll all be very pleasantly surprised. It'll be quite a deal to see. Uh, thank you very much. Point of order that the, the the record is the record. It's not a. This isn't time to correct some misspoken um, measure. So, Councilmember Kurtzwell. Uh, yes, uh, that would be a accurate statement with uh, Robert's rules. Is that this is not the time to add to comments that were made in a prior meeting. This is only to correct what was said in the past, not to add additional information that you have learned since the meeting. So I would um, request that the gentleman's request to amend the meeting uh, minutes according to what he has stated be uh, denied. Excuse me. Thank you, Councilmember Member Kurtzwell. Um, <clears throat> Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. And uh, following Councilmember Kurtzwell's statement, I'll move the minutes as provided. Second. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Move on to the approval of the bills this evening. Council Member Kivel. I'll move the bills. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> move on to the approval of the agenda this evening. I do know that um, we do need to add Mayor Pro Tem um, on. Yeah, correct. Thank you for that. Councilman right. Kurtzwell. 
move the agenda to add an item, namely appointment or selection of Mayor Pro Tem. Of course. And the STEM cog, cog rep. <clears throat> we have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Approval of the consent agenda this evening. Uh, only one item is on that, uh, the Kiwanis Christmas tree sale. Councilman Kurtzwell. Move the consent agenda. I'll support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Mm. We'll now move on to the certification of election and swearing in of elected officials. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanna congratulate Mayor Peltat and Council Member Kivel on being reelected and welcome and congratulate our new council members, Lori Moser and Alex Hansen. We had a really good election. It was local, so the turnout was not the best. It was like 18%, but everything went well. And I wanna thank uh, my deputy, Judy Piper, Carol Brandon, DPW, and of course the South Line Police Department who's always helpful. So with that, if you don't mind, I think I'll swear you in first. All right. All right. So just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the constitution. I will support the Constitution of the United States of the United States and of the state and of this state and I will faithfully discharge the duties and I will faithfully discharge the duties of mayor for the city of, of South mayor Line. in the city of South Line according to the best of my ability to the best of my ability thank you thank you so now I would like to swear in council member Kibble Moser and Hanson. So if you'll raise your hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the state. And the Constitution of the state. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will, I will faithfully, faithfully discharge, discharge the duties. The of council member, of okay. council member, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. My ability. Okay, thank you. Thank you, City Clerk Deaton. Um, since this isn't still a, a normal process for all of us. Um, I have spoke to council member Richards prior to us opening the floor for public comment. Um, it is my understanding that former council member had a statement that he'd like to read this evening. Um, former council member Walton, I, would, I will do the same for you as well Is if you'd like to stick around, I will, I will recognize you second and then we will then move on to the full public comment. Um, so at this time, uh, the floor is Mr. Richards. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It has been an honor and a privilege to have served the city for the past four years. As we all can see, this is our democracy at work and I believe in the voice of the people. I thank my fellow colleagues for their support and fairness on this stage of my life's journey. Dan and Paul have shown us all great leadership from the unfortunate abyss that we came into on the council and we have all been the better for it. During the four years of voting, I stand by my decisions that I made in the course of my term on council. And it was with a humble heart that I have admitted when I was wrong and made the necessary corrections as to the best of my abilities. In my candidate interview, 
when I was asked by reporter Bromley directly to give an honest response to the question of the 3.2 mills that would be needed for road improvement, I answered truthfully. I had to respond in full to the question, and although it was painful to do it, the facts are overwhelming. And I could not dodge it with false rationalizations and claims and equivocations. I wish the new electors the best of luck in their four-year journey, and I will eventually return to being an activist, and I may provide information of facts in the course of future council comments. I hope to be involved with the committee that forms eventually for the sesquicentennial event that will be coming up in one and a half years, and uh, hopefully it uh, goes well. This is still my home. I'll be around. Uh, and uh, South Lion will always be my home, too. I thank you all again. And with that, I will turn to Council Member Rose Walden to give you her thoughts. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Richards. <clears throat> Ms. Walden, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it, it really has been an honor and a privilege to work with this council. We came in under some very trying times without leadership with an interim city manager, came to meet Paul, and he has done a fabulous job for our city. And he's going to continue to do great things. I'm so happy to see the council that we have right now it has been very successful. We have had very interesting times, um, unprecedented times with the coronavirus and trying to hold meetings, trying to understand what's happening, not being able to come into City Hall to have discussions. You know, we've really had to make some different efforts to get things done and this council has done it. So thank you very much for the last four years. I appreciate all of your help, all of our hard work, and I'm so glad to see the city moving forward. And I can't wait to see what happens in the next few years, but I will definitely be around as well. South Lion has always been my home, always will be my home. And I cannot wait to be on the committee for the first responders bell. I will be on many other committees, but that is you know, near and dear to my heart. So I'm just gonna keep putting it out there. Whoever's organizing it, pick me, pick me, pick me. Thank you all, have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Walton. <clears throat> At this time, we will open the floor for the regular public comment. Please remember to state your name and address, and please also remember the two minute time limit. If you have more material, uh, we do have a second public comment at the end of the meeting as well. City Clerk Deaton, do we have anyone uh, awaiting public comment tonight? I do not. Okay, thank you. We will close the floor for public comment and move on to the discussion of downtown with Mr. Nate Mack. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and welcome to all the new council members and congratulations to you, everyone um, on being reelected and elected to city council. Okay, so the last, the last time we met, uh, the farmer's market was on the cusp of the final week of the season. Well, that has passed us now. Um, so the farmer's market finished for this, has finished for the season. Overall, season went well. Um, it was a little bit easier to navigate than last year. And uh, I'm, I'm still working on scheduling an end of season meeting to get feedback from our vendors uh, on how we can improve the market going into next season. Um, so the, the Cool Yule Committee has been meeting and I'm sure as some people have seen um, this year because things are different um, than they have been before, uh, we've determined that we will be changing the name of the event from the Cool Yule to the Holiday Spectacular. Uh, the event will still be taking place that first Saturday in December. Um, and we're still planning on having a parade and a few other things going on as well. Um, as we get closer to the event date, I'll, I'll share more details with that. Uh, last Thursday and Friday, I attended the Michigan Downtown Association's annual conference. Um, during the conference, I was uh, notified that I was elected to be on the board of that organization. So uh, pretty, pretty happy about that. I've been involved with their legislative committee for six years, so it's good to step up and be on the board. Uh, this Thursday, the DDA board is meeting uh, November 11th at 8 a.m. Uh, we'll be going over the um, contract for the new farmer's market manager position with Slara, as well as giving um, 
one of two informational presentations on the activities of the DDA over the course of the last year. The, se the next one will be that I'll be presenting will be to the will be during the city council meeting. I believe the first one in December. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just a quick update on some holiday decorations. Uh, the, the garland will be going up the week of Thanksgiving. I believe it's supposed to come in next Friday, so we're putting that garland up. Um, you know, we, we set them out kind of after Thanksgiving because it is live garland and it, you know, it has a limited shelf life. Uh, let's see here. And then this Friday, um, everyone, you know, so you're all aware we have the ladies night out event coming up from five to nine. Uh, streets will be closed from on uh, Lafayette Street from Whipple to Lake Street from four to 10 p.m. So the event will be taking place from five to nine, but we'll have the street closures uh, an hour before and an hour after in order to get the picnic tables and the propane uh, heaters that we'll be setting up uh, in the event space in the street to get them set up and then torn down after the event. Uh, and with that, uh, that's the end of my report. So thank you. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. So Nate, what's the, uh, is there a target date for uh, taking down the scarecrows and the corn stalks then? Yeah, we, we had, had spoken about um, the corn stalks and the scarecrows could stay up till potentially, you know, like the 15th. Um, and then, you know, as we get closer to, to Thanksgiving, because, you know, corn stalks still kind of fit in with the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, I was going to go down and, and take the corn stalks off the light poles before DPW goes and sets out the garland. So that's out of the way. So that we kind of don't really have any laps in any lamp pole decorations. Yeah, it looks like looks like some of the scarecrows are gone. There's just a, a few stragglers. And I was just curious when the uh, if there was a deadline to get them down or not, that's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Anyone else have anything for Nate this evening? All right, great. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. <clears throat> now move on to the fire chief report. I believe we've got Captain Armstrong uh, in this evening for the uh, chief, our fire chief report. Uh, floor is yours, Captain. Good evening. Congratulations to all the newly elected and re-elected council members. Uh, two things, the new gear that we will be getting from the Firehouse Subs grant. Uh, we just got the funding for that. So eight people are gonna be getting measured on the 23rd. I talked to the rep today, so he'll be coming out. And then our challenge coins for the funding for the memorial. And we just got those today. So we'll get something posted on the Facebook this week and uh, let people know how they can be purchased. So I think that's about all I got. All right. Does anyone have anything for Captain Armstrong this evening? Are those priced uh, at the same rate as the PD coins have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Captain Armstrong. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. Move on to the police chief report and Chief Sovic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, congratulations to the uh, those that were reelected this past election for the new members and for the outgoing. We thank you for your service and continued service. So just wanted to put that out to you guys. I uh, look forward to working with you for my final stretch for a while. Uh, no, no issues uh, the Halloween, uh, the citywide or the downtown trunk retreat, other than the weather on the uh, during the citywide, it got a little bit kind of crappy after. Uh, about 710, but um, no issues. We had a good time passing out the uh, candy in the subdivisions as possible. Uh, took some good pictures with some of the students and uh, kids, and you'll see that in our annual report. Uh, congratulations to the South Lion East girls uh, cross-country team. We had a chance to uh, parade and escort them through the downtown area before they went to their MIS this past Saturday, and I understand they finished 13th, so uh, they had a pretty good showing. It was a pretty good time for them, so congratulations. Uh, South Lion football still undefeated. I'll, let, I'll leave that to, to Mayor Pelchat later on, but um, 11 or no is a pretty good, uh, let's keep that train rolling, folks. So uh, the No Shave November, as you can see, has started. Uh, the Maggie's Wigs for Kids. Um, we've already received a donation from one of the council persons, and uh, we thank you for that. And so that's going to be continuing all throughout November. And the officers are also participating in that. It costs them at least 50 bucks in order for them to not shave this month. So that's uh, for a good cause. And we also uh, sent some of our officers up to the, uh, the live auction that was occurring at the Colonial Lakers Clubhouse this past Saturday. Uh, they had a pretty good time uh, interacting with, with some folks and said it was pretty uh, pretty good time. So other than that, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have for you tonight. Anyone have anything for Chief Sovic tonight? Councilmember Kibble, go ahead. 
I just know that there was an awful lot of people that were really tickled when PD was going around through the neighborhoods with candy. The kids always get a big kick out of that. So I'm I'm really grateful that you guys see that as a, as a valuable thing to do. Yeah, I think we passed out about 1,800 pieces altogether. So uh, with the lights and sirens as, as usual in the past. So it's uh, we enjoyed that. Yeah, that's great. Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chief, uh, I was looking at your uh, report and was very impressed with the community contacts uh, that you have made. Uh, could you just sort of expand on what some of those community contacts uh, are? Uh, I know that other police departments in other areas don't seem to have as high because I've sort of got some friends in other departments and I've inquired into this community contact issue. Uh, they don't seem to have the um, commitment to community contact the way the Southland Police Department does. So maybe you could elaborate a little bit on what some of those community contacts are. Sure. Uh, yeah, you know, years ago, we started when I when I first was appointed uh, the police chief, we wanted that one of my things was to we need to be more involved in the community and as far as the interaction. So just some of the things that we do, the intentional actions, some of our officers go into businesses and say, hey, introduce myself. This is officer so and so uh, Southland Police Department. Uh, if there's any issues, please contact us. If there's anything that we can do for you, if you're having any issues with anybody or anything, please contact us. And it's just a, it's just a quick two minute, you know, contact let them know that we're around. Uh, we go into subdivisions. We just, uh, people are out there working and doing things. We stop, we kind of ask for an evaluation. Hey, anything that we can do better, anything that, you, uh, that you're that you not seeing that you would like to see. And uh, just things, it's just intentional contacts. Um, anything that will just kind of strengthen the relationship that we have with our community. We help people change tires. I mean, we, uh, it'd be a bit, we help people get back into bed uh, when they, and including Lakers, when they, when they just, when they fall out of bed and stuff. So anything that we can do, a lot of it's just a self-initiated activity that we can have, that we can interact with our community to let them know that we are here and that we, <clears throat> we actually do care about the citizens of our community and the people passing through and that we do care about having a partnership. So uh, I think support is very important uh, in today's uh, police world nowadays. So uh, anything that we can do to strengthen that relationship between our community and the police department, especially with everything going on nowadays. Um, these are just intentional acts that uh, that we want to get to let the people know that we are here for them and we support them no matter what they what they do or what they how they how they react to the police. So thank you. Yep. Thanks, Chief. Does anyone else have anything for Chief tonight? Councilmember Hansen. Uh, Chief, I wanted to thank you personally. As a uh, father of two, my daughter's got a real kick out of the uh, police coming through the neighborhood, uh, even lifting them up uh, in the police cruiser to at least get the candy out of the officer's hand. Those are <laughs> priceless um, uh, interactions that honestly uh, money can't buy. So I want to echo what uh, Glenn already uh, touched on earlier, and uh, thank you so much for uh, 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 letting your officers uh, be a part of um, my neighborhood personally and, and neighborhoods in the area. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a lot of times it's just the little things that that we do that just really make the difference. And so it takes a little bit more effort to do those little things, but we're willing to do it. <clears throat> Councilmember Kibble, go ahead. This will sound self-evident, but uh, I mean, just those little things, the, the breaking barriers by going into the businesses. I mean, the, those little things make everybody just have a comfort level that's just a, a notch better every time that they have uh, an experience like that with an officer. So I, I really do think that that pays off in huge dividends. You know, I think a lot of times we get one opportunity, you know, to make the first impression. And a lot of times most people won't even have a contact with the police, you know, the police department or police officer. But if we can make that, that intentional contact a positive one, uh, that's, that's, that's our plan. That's our, that's Absolutely. our goal. Yeah, I agree. All right, thanks for the update, Chief. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> we'll move on to new business number one this evening, waste hauling contract extension. Thank you, Mayor. City of South Line is planning to move forward with an RFP for waste hauling beginning January 3rd, 2022 with selections to occur no later than March 28th, 2022. Last week, we received a letter from GFL requesting to extend the current waste hauling contract for one four-year extension of the agreement. The request to increase the current rates by 4.5% to begin the new contract year, which begins on July 1st, 2022. 
I've attached materials dated November 2nd, 2021 from Mike Sapo from RSOC pertaining to the GFL contract extension proposal, and also a letter dated October 21st, 2021 from GFL outlining uh, the extension. I've also included for you the copy of the draft RFP for the waste hauling contract. Possible courses of action this evening is approve or not approve the extension, which GFL is outlined in a letter dated October 21st, 2021. Mm -hmm. And also, if that is the case, we would proceed with pre uh, preparing an agreement uh, for that based upon your recommendation. Tonight, we have two representatives here this evening. We have Representative Sam Carmago from GFL is at the meeting to speak, as well as Mike Sable from General Manager from RSOC to speak. I suggest allowing Sam to speak first on this and then Mike would follow up and then we could potentially uh, have a question and answer regarding some of the uh, particulars of the proposed extension. Sam, the, Sam, the floor is, is uh, yeah, Sam, the floor is yours, bud. Okay, hello, Mayor and Council. Um, thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, yes, uh, your, your contract is coming due in, uh, in June this year, and I sent a letter asking for an opportunity to extend this contract, uh, as, um, as was stated. Um, I'd like to say that I realized we had some service troubles earlier this year related to staffing problems that I think we are beyond now and, and have fixed. Um, obviously, it was a... a, a trying time for us as well as most everybody in the rubbish industry. So I think we've got that problem fixed. I would like to, uh, I'd like to ask for your support in extending this contract. Uh, you'll see from Mike's, uh, Sapo's comments that it is an attractive offer and uh, I truly hope for your, uh, for your support. Thank you. Michael, you can go ahead. Oh, Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Did you have a question to start? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, good evening, Sam. Uh, I sort of wanted to talk and make sure I understand uh, the contract. Uh, your rate increases, you're proposing a rate increase to take effect, um, which is going to represent, and that will be July 1st of 2022 in the amount of 4.49%. So that's a 5% increase, is that correct? Beginning next year, July 1st? Yes, that, that increase would be effective July of next, uh, of next year, yes. I think that's a little high. How much, What? Let, let's go back a little bit. What was the issue with respect to providing uh, timely services this spring? Was it you couldn't get workers? Was it? Was yeah, the, it the problem was generally related to, to staffing levels, trying to attract and retain employees in this industry. Now, uh, they're, the employees are paid fairly well, but uh, when, the, when, the, um, uh, when the government subsidy and funds came out, it was tough to get people to come to work and stay at work. So we had to take a bunch of measures to attract and keep our employees. There were signing bonuses, retention bonuses. Uh, we had to raise the rate of pay considerably a couple of times in the last, in let's say the last year. Uh, you know, your typical increases are two, 3%. Uh, we've had to go well above and beyond that uh, multiple times to, to stay in the, uh, in the game here, I guess I'll say. Uh, these employees were making anywhere from 17 to 20, $21 an hour. Now we're well north of $23, $24 an hour uh, doing the same work. And the only thing that's passed is time. So it's been quite a, quite a challenge. Uh, and again, I think we're over that challenge now. And uh, uh, our ability to stabilize our workforce has happened uh, probably um, uh, in the last two months. Is, is your workforce union or non-union? They're non-union workforce. Okay. so. So you really don't have a, 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 you know, I think most people know I'm pretty pro-union. Um, what you don't have is a fixed way of dealing with your labor costs right now because you're non-union. 
So if you had a union contract, I'm not advocating it, but I'm just giving one example of why it might be slightly advantageous is because you can lock in your labor costs. You have no way of locking in labor costs right now. So your labor costs, as I look at it, are going to be rather fluid um, as we move forward, uh, particularly if the vaccine mandate becomes an issue. I don't know how many of your workers have been vaccinated, how many don't. That's, that's between you and your employees. But many employers are going to be facing some very severe labor shortages um, if the vaccine mandate goes through. So the shortages in labor potentially could come again um, in January, February, March. And if you are using financial incentives to retain employees, um, I, I just see potentially your labor costs may be going up because you don't have them fixed. So I don't know, this, this could be a very expensive contract for the city. Uh, would you like to comment? I'm, I'm just out there with my I comments. Tell, I will tell you, I will tell you that our wages are competitive, have been competitive with any, with any of our competitors. Uh, everybody has raised wages. The employees have been uh, essentially bouncing from company to company uh, to uh, to find a better wage. Uh, as far as union wages go, there's not many union companies in the area right now, uh, but wages are very competitive across the board. Again, I believe we've stabilized our issue. Um, the uh, uh, we've stabilized that problem right now. I, I would hope that doesn't get doesn't get worse. But again, that's why we're asking you to lock into a contract with us that has a one time uh, increase of four and a half percent. And then it goes back into your 2%, maximum 2% increases year to year to year. And that's a risk we take. That's a risk we take. We feel that this increase now is an opportunity to catch up with the recent past and move forward. Yeah, but, but, but the, the increase is going to be 4.5%. And then it's going to be 2% on top of that over the no. next couple of years. And you, annual increases, yes, just, that's the same thing you have now. It's just a one time, instead of a 2% this, this uh, July, it would be a 4.5%. And then every July after that is a CPI increase up to 2%. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. City Manager Zelnick, did you want to allow Michael to say his piece here? Where, do, where are we going from here? I think it'd be a good idea for Mike from RSOC to talk for a few minutes because he may be able to clear up some of the um, items that are our discussion tonight and identify some of the items that may be brought up by some of the council members later within, the, within this discussion. Okay, thank you. Michael, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, City Council, for having me uh, here this evening. Uh, and also, I appreciate Paul and um, you know the conversation we've had over the past uh, um, month or so on these topics. Uh, just want to uh, sort of provide some context for the discussion tonight, and then give you some specifics, and then you know certainly be available to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, I think, you know, there's, there's perhaps a, th a third way, a middle way that, that might be of interest to, to the community as well. Um, you know, the context should be, uh, does your hauler, does your contracted hauler provide service that's consistent with what you as an elected officials and you as a city administration feel is, is uh, adequate to, to your residents. And, and we certainly had some hiccups over the summer. There's, there's no secret about that. Um, I frankly view that as somewhat of an anomaly um, in terms of GFL's overall service record. And certainly um, I've known Sam for you know, 30, nearly 30 years and, and, and his service reputation um, is, is uh, um, as good as it gets. Uh, I will say that the service challenges that GFL experienced over the summer are not unique to GFL, nor are they unique to South Lyon. If you've talked to any of your colleagues across the state, or if you've read any of the news across the country, uh, you know that you know many, many communities have seen some service cha challenges um, because of the labor shortages, because of shortage of mechanics, and because of shortages in, in availability of truck parts. Uh, GFL exacerbated that 
this summer with some some changes to uh, staffing and some logistical changes. Um, and there has been an increase in demand in, in, um, in, in service needs. Uh, if you look at the data and what's happened since 2019, we've seen steady increase in volumes of materials set at the curb, whether it's folks doing do it your home projects, doing more activities at home, including work from home, or doing more uh, um, lawn projects and garden projects, we've seen an increase in demand for collecting material at the curb, uh, increased volumes, and that's you know also contributed to the service issues that many have had across the, the state and across the country. But it really does come down to: Do you feel that the um, hauler, does GFL and, and Sam and his team, have they corrected, course corrected, and are they providing the service that's appropriate to the residents of South Lyon? If that's not the case, then I certainly recommend you move to a request for proposal process and, and, and solicit new bids. Um, having said that, I wouldn't imagine that you're going to see significantly different dynamics from one uh, hauler to the next. And I can tell you that we've seen service challenges across the board in all communities, uh, or I should say in all haulers. It does vary from yard to yard and, and, and management team to management team, uh, even within companies. Uh, so I've seen some uh, GFL customers that have had excellent service over the course of the summer. And we know that some, some GFL customers did not. Uh, so it really is a matter of had they corrected it. Now, if they've corrected it, then the question becomes, what's the best path forward to um, make sure that you continue to have good service at a good price? Personally, I'm a bird in the hand kind of guy. And so I look at, you know, the, my first inclination is, can you negotiate uh, a, a fair extension deal with GFL? Again, assuming that you believe that the service issue has been resolved and that Sam and his team will you know, keep it resolved. Uh, there's a proposal on the table from them to increase at four and a half percent and then return to the, uh, the, the annual increases of, of between zero and two percent, depending on where the, uh, the CPI is. The current contract, it can't be less than zero. If the CPI happens to be negative, you still you don't see an increase, um, if, but it's capped at two. So if, if it goes above uh, the CPI goes above two percent, you, your, your exposure is limited to two percent. Um, now, th this isn't an either or because uh, another alternative uh, is built into your contract. Uh, currently, the way the contract reads, the hauler can request six months in advance an extension, and you've got that letter in your hand. The city, of its own volition, could notify GFL um, no earlier than or no later than 90 days from the uh, June 30th contract expiration that you intend to uh, extend the contract at, under the current terms. Now, the challenge with extending it under the current terms is the only difference between the proposal that, that Sam has put on the table and, and the current terms is that instead of seeing the four and a half percent increase July 1, you'd see only a 2% increase. The, the challenge with that is given the labor environment, given the uh, inflationary environment, and I provided some, some uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics data that you have, uh, the costs are going up more than 2% in, in this industry and in many industries. And there's a you know, reasonably good chance that if you um, just say, we wanna extend this at 2%, um, hmm there's a possibility that they could walk away. I, I don't know if that you know, would actually happen, but that's one possibility. But what we do know for sure is you know, just extending under the current terms, you wouldn't make any changes to your contract. One of the changes that's been discussed uh, and is a trend in the industry is extending your yard waste season into December. Uh, we've seen more and more often residents having yard waste collection needs into December. Uh, I think that would be a good addition to modifying your specifications to add a couple of weeks of yard waste collection into December. Of course, that doesn't come free. Uh, and with a 2% increase and extending service, 
uh, that might be problematic for GFL. And I certainly, you know, would invite Sam to comment on that uh, when, when I'm done speaking. Uh, but an alternative would be to offer uh, somewhere between the 2% and the 4.5%, somewhere in the ballpark of a 3% increase, one-time increase as of July 1, uh, with adding two more weeks of yard waste collection. And then after that, uh, return to the zero to two percent annual increases. You might even want to consider a shorter term increase or a shorter term extension, maybe limited to three years, so you can uh, not be locked into uh, a long longer contract. Um, trends are three to seven years. I've seen eight year contracts. I've seen some recent extensions of seven years and, and five years. Uh, three years is also a, a pretty common number. Um, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to does, this, does the city administration, do, do, does it, do the elected officials think that the service has been um, right, righted, is the, is the service where you want it to be? If it is, you have some opportunities here to, to discuss some improvements to your current agreement and uh, you know, get it at a, a really good price. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna go over in great detail all the numbers I shared with you in the memo, but if you look at what other communities are paying, if you look at trends, uh, if you look at ranges, which is what I recommend, I, I, I never recommend, you know, trying to make an apples to apples comparison from one community to the next, because there's so many factors that are, are, are different uh, from one community to the next, whether it's size, density, location, mm -hmm proximity to waste facilities, proximity to hauling yards. Uh, but generally, you know, if you want to go down that path, your prices compare very favorably uh, to, to most communities. There are a few outliers out there, even within the Rossock communities that have some historical reasons dating back more than half a decade as to why they're so low. Um, but if you look at you know, current trends and other ranges within Oakland County, I, I think you'll, you, you, you can't but agree that um, you know, the price that you currently have and the price that uh, uh, is being proposed, particularly if you uh, bring them in a little bit less, is, is, is competitive. Now, would you get a better price if you go out for bid? Possibly. It's, you know, I've seen crazy things happen in this industry, but it's also possible that you wouldn't see as pricing as good. And then the question becomes, what is it worth to a homeowner to save five or ten dollars um, per household per year if you're, if you're not going to get the service that you expect. So it comes down to how the community feels about the service and, uh, you know, what, what changes are you looking for in terms of, uh, you know, maybe improving upon the existing service in this, this, the types of service, like getting a couple more weeks of yard waste. And then having said all that, you know, Paul and I did work over the past month on putting in a request for proposal together so that should the council not want to do an extension, in any shape or form, we are prepared to put this out uh, to the marketplace to solicit proposals. And we're including in the uh, RFP, extending yard waste for a couple of weeks, and then also taking some additional um, uh, pricing on adding carts for everybody for recycling and carts for everybody for trash, you know, if, if, that's, if that's something that uh, would be of, uh, um, importance to, to the community and you can get pricing for that to see where that, that lies. Um, adding carts in an extension environment, um, you know, you're, you're going to definitely see some big increases because carts aren't cheap. Uh, GFL probably gets them at 50 or 60 bucks a cart. Um, you know, if you were to buy them on the retail market, they're going to be 70 to $80 a cart. And, and, and not everybody wants one. You do have about a third of your residents that have opted in for the free cart uh, that they can get through GFL uh, for recycling. And so about a third of your residents are, are, are using carts at their own uh, option, uh, and then, but they continue to use uh, you know, trash cans, their own trash cans and trash bags for, for trash. I guess with that, I, I don't wanna take up too much more of your time, but I'm, I'm certainly here to answer any questions and, and to listen and to, to do whatever needs to be done to, to help you make sure that your residents have the service uh, that they deserve uh, come July 1st of next year. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Michael and Sam, it's, uh, it's great to see you both again. It's been, uh, been, been a long time and uh, it's certainly been a, a challenging time as well. Uh, just to uh, build on what, uh, what Michael mentioned, uh, you know, I, I just would caution about letting uh, 
four or five months of uh, trying times uh, for a service provider uh, overshadow four years of service. Uh, I think we've had pretty good service in the city from GFL. Uh, they've had some challenges. I think in most cases, when uh, when garbage or guard waste or something wasn't picked up, it was addressed within the, uh, the following 24 hour period. Uh, as far as the, uh, you know, talking about some of the other things that, uh, you know, maybe GFL would consider as part of the, uh, you know, getting the extension. Uh, Paul and I discussed uh, the uh, extending the yard waste pickup through December as GFL has done with the city of Novi and uh, some other locations. I think that would be advantageous for the citizens. Uh, I'd also like to see if they're willing to consider extending the uh, offer that they made four years ago for the 2000 carts so that we could get the, uh, the remainder. We have a number of people that will be moving into the city in new developments and so forth. Uh, we're currently at over 50%, Mike, uh, for those carts right now. We've delivered about 1300 out of the 2000. So, uh, you know, we've got about another 700 to go and I'd love to see everybody get those carts and capitalize on uh, increasing our uh, recycling rate here in the city. So if GFL uh, might entertain that as part of the, uh, the extension to, uh, you know, just uh, maintain that initial offer of the 2000 recycling carts, uh, I think it'd be a nice, a nice ad. You know, going through the, the RFP that you and Paul put together, um, it, was, it was pretty thorough. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to uh, or get a copy of the uh, the current contract. So I'm going to ask you if some of these things are actually in the current contract. And Sam, you would probably know better uh, uh, better than I do, obviously, uh, whether some of these are actually in there. So one of the things that I saw that was of interest was the uh, removal of appliances containing refrigerant, and the GFL would be responsible for properly purging those units uh, before discarding them. That a, a responsibility would not fall to the homeowner. Is that currently in the uh, the present contract? Yes. Okay, great, great. Uh, there was also a section that dealt with the penalty clauses in place to deal with, you know, uh, chronic delivery issues uh, and so forth. I don't know that we've ever been heavy handed and, uh, and actually uh, implemented any of those penalty clauses, but are there penalty clauses currently in the contract that we have right now? Uh, okay. Uh Councilman, yes, there are. And, and like like most con municipal contracts, they're included in there, but rarely used. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, I've watched the guys go through uh, through my neighborhood. Uh, it does not look like a war zone when they're done. I mean, they take the, uh, the, uh, the cards, they tip them over, put them upside down, back on the curb in most cases. Uh, I'd like to see that. I don't know if it's a, a training issue or whatever, but I certainly would like to see that... Uh, that's uh, a, a standard as far as all those trash receptacles always go back up on the curb so that it doesn't uh, impede sweeping the streets, plowing the streets, et cetera. In most cases they do, uh, but there are the outliers. They also have in cases have left them in, uh, in front of mailboxes. And I watched the postal uh, carrier come in, have to push them down the street with their truck in order to reach the mailbox. So again, maybe it's a training issue. And if that's something that could become more uh, you know, standard operating procedure, that would be a, a welcome addition across the city, I'm sure. Uh, one of the other things was the uh, having a single point of contact to resolve issues that do arise. I think we've got a supervisor that's assigned to, to the city, right? Is that right, Sam? Yes, you do, yes. Okay, and they, uh, under, in talking to the folks at City Hall, they're pretty responsible uh, as far as addressing issues when they arise and, uh, and so forth. Uh, talking about the trucks being equipped with uh, brooms, shovels, et cetera, and that the, uh, the drivers are required to pick up uh, spillage and so forth. Is that pretty much standard operating procedure in the current contract as well? Yes, it is. Okay. And the only reason I ask that is it was probably two years ago. Uh, we did have a driver that, uh, you know, down the street, probably four or five houses pulled away from the, uh, the street. And I don't know what they picked up at that house, uh, but it looked like a snowstorm in the middle of the street from somebody had, that had shredded paper and they were driving away from it. And uh, I mentioned to them, I said, hey, you left all that stuff down there. You got to go pick it up. They did turn around and go clean it up. But uh, you know, I just want to make sure that that is standard procedure. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is there something in the current contract as far as provisions for addressing uh, damage that's caused by uh, leaking hydraulic units, engine oil, et cetera? Is that also part of our current uh, contract? Yes. yes. Okay. 
And, you know, we haven't made any, any changes. Uh, I think you pick up just about everything that's put out there. Um, you've pretty, pretty well specified as far as everything other than a, uh, uh, 12 foot tree. That's a foot in diameter. I mean, you, uh, they'll take the other uh, smaller branches. I think it's less than six inches or whatever the, the number was there. And again, been pretty good about uh, picking up the yard waste and the rest of it. Uh, I really personally uh, getting the feedback that I have other than the calls that I got early on when uh, service was being disrupted, you know, it was a rough spot. It smoothed out. I haven't had any calls, emails, et cetera, since then. I, uh, I'm pretty pleased with the service that we, uh, we have right now. And I've been pretty pleased with the service that we've had in the past. Like I said, I would like to see if GFL consider obviously the extension of picking up yard waste through uh, mid-December and also the uh, opportunity to take advantage of the remaining 700 recycling carts that uh, you offered four, uh, four years ago. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Councilmember Kennedy. Uh, Councilmember Dilg, you're gonna go first and then we're coming to you, Councilmember Dilg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I did, uh, after I uh, saw that we were gonna be talking about this, did talk to a lot of different people. Um, I just wanted to say that for the most part, people seem very pleased with the services. And um, although I do think that 4.5% does seem a little high, I, sir, I, I'm not confident we would do much better given the uh, labor market um, uh, if we were to put it out to bid. And um, I would just want to add that I would like to see the uh, extra weeks in December. I think that's really important because um, there are still leaves on the trees sometimes. And uh, I think that it's, I think it's a, a pretty necessary thing for us to add in there. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Dillon. Councilmember Kibble, go ahead. I agree with that, uh, those thoughts. Uh, I wouldn't mind if we entertain the idea of maybe going to 4%, but um, just to give them a little cover for some of the things that, that we wanna bake in. But uh, some of their, I don't think that their economic pressures are likely to end up being uh, exasperated by the, the fact that the government was giving people incentives to not go to work. So uh, with that in the rear view mirror, I think that we're much less likely to see that you're going to have some labor issues uh, in the future. So I think that we, you guys performed very well right out of the gates for us. And uh, up until this last COVID um, circumstance, you guys were able to perform your duties uh, admirably. So I think that the extension, as uh, Steve had said with the, um, the remaining bins, and I would like to see it uh, just drop down to 4% for that, the raise intermittently. Um, I'm cool with what we're doing with you guys, so. Council Member Kurtzwell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I personally, and, and none of the neighbors that I have spoken to uh, really have issues with the service coming from GFL. So that, you know, service is not an issue uh, for me. Uh, for me, it's more of a uh, financial cost, that's all. And I'm, try I'm just trying to find a medium here um, because you may not be aware, uh, the city is uh, going to be proposing a, a bond this summer uh, to repair our roads. So that's going to be an additional cost with additional mills that it's going to be passed on to the consumers. The consumers now are already paying the highest gas prices that they have paid in decades. Um, grocery store prices are up. So I have to look at the big picture as to all these increases that our residents are paying um, coming from this new economy or these new challenges that we are facing. So uh, 4.5 is a little uh, high for me, uh, 3.8, 4.0 seems good. Um, bring that down a, a little bit. I think I'd, I'd feel a little bit better. Um, I'm not necessarily interested in increasing the cost of the contract by extending services into December. We've gotten along um, uh, very well without having rubbish in December. There aren't that many people that are gardening. I'm a huge gardener. Um, I don't garden in uh, December. I'm done. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm just looking at ways to reduce additional cost to uh, the contract. Uh, one thing I did want to get clarified Let's say that the city wanted to, and I think Mike, you had mentioned it, is 
uh, we can extend this contract for five years or six years or seven years. Is that what you're yeah. doing? Go on. Oh, Michael, you got, yep, you're muted. All right, am I there? Okay, sorry. Yep. Um, too many clicks. The you would be able to extend it for four years under the current contract. For four years. Yes, yes. The, the contractor uh, can request a four-year extension, and the city can you know, grant it, or the city can notify the contractor that you're going to extend it for four years. Well, say we wanted to extend it for five years. Well, you know, certainly that wouldn't be the first time that, it would, regardless of what a contract said, this the city, you know, comes to a mutual agreement with its with its hauler and and, and comes up with something that that works for everybody. Uh, um, so um, you, that's it's not baked into the contract that language, uh, but you know you do have I believe uh, the authority to, to to make that call. We well, think it you know contracts can be amended, and I'm looking at getting through the next four or five years when we have this bond to get us off our feet, and I'm not going to get into the issues with the bond. But there'll be a point to where some of the numbers on that mill for the bond will be dropping off um, because other debt will be paid off. So the impact of the bond millage won't be as um, difficult for some of our residents in the city as it may be when we first start out. So if we can get the hauling contract through that period of time and, and contain our costs uh, and, and limit those increases, over the next five years uh, to 2%. Uh, I just like to throw that out there for debate and see whether there's any interest in, in that issue too, so. Council Member Kibble, go ahead. Well, just as a, an example, the transition from four and a half to uh, four shaves off like $8. For somebody, so uh, it's it's not an, a huge individual uh, change, but the aggregate of it would end up putting some more money or leaving money in our fund balance. So I think that if if we can get away with that, I'd, I'd feel cool. I'd feel comfortable with that. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. So council member Kivell, you're saying, looking at, at the uh, a 4.0 increase with the um, the added things that we just talked about, the That's two, two weeks into December and the remainder of the recycling carts, is that correct? Yeah, actually I was talking, I thought we were going all the way through December. I know that that, um, that, we, that adds another two weeks, but it doesn't really, the, the likelihood that the last two weeks would end up becoming a real onus for them um, is pretty unlikely. So uh, I don't think that that's a big hit right there. Yeah, I think what, what they, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I've seen in the contract that uh, GFL uh, let with uh, Novi is it was it was two weeks into December, if, I'm, if I remember. And uh, one of the other cities, and I don't remember which other city it was that I saw as well, whether it was Farmington or, or wherever it was, but uh, that seems to be typical, it's just the first couple of weeks in December. Yeah, for, for context, uh, you're absolutely right, Councilman Kennedy. Um, Novi is uh, two weeks into two, uh, into December. It's, it's you know through the second full week of December. Farmington Hills now does it that way. Uh, the village of Milford, Milford Township, are having converse, these same conversations, and they're looking at uh, adding just a week uh, into December. Uh, but the trend does seem to be you know, through the second full week of December. After that. Um, you know, the, the demand for, for uh, any yard waste service drops off, but we do still see some leaves on the trees in December. Uh, and certainly even if they're, they're not f uh, off the trees by, if they're even off the trees by Thanksgiving, that doesn't mean they're, you know, all raked up and at the curb by then. So we recommend, you know, two, two weeks into December. Okay, thank you. Councilman Kurtzwell, go ahead. Yeah, um, Mike or Sam, I just had a quick question. Where where are you carrying your yard waste in December? I thought most of the places closed because the trucks can't get in due to the 
you know, no. the mud at Tut Hill closes, I thought, or do you no. not use Tut Hill? We, we use Tut Hill. Uh, we have multiple sites. We have uh, our site in Salem Township. We use uh, Tut Hill Farms. We use a, a firm called Spurt uh, in Wixom, but th they're, they're available to stay open. Uh, things have changed through the years and the demand yes. has changed. That, uh, that mid-December date is, is becoming more popular now than ever. Let's face it, this year is a, kind of a crazy year as well. The colors didn't even change until after Thanksgiving this year. So there'll be a, there'll be a late collection this year in yard waste. We, we have seen the compost industry has recalibrated their, uh, their schedules for accepting material to comport with the change in needs that homeowners have. And so the, the, the collectors that are collecting in December do have facilities to which they can take the, the yard waste. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Councilmember Kennedy. So just for clarification, we've thrown a lot of things out there. Where do we need to go from here? We've talked about, you know, seeing if uh, if there's a way to to move the uh, the price increase closer to 4.0. We've talked about uh, providing to uh, obtain the remainder of the uh, 2,000 recycling cards. We've talked about extending the waste pickup into the second week of December uh, is potential conditions for getting the extension. Do, uh, does Sam go back and, and work with his folks between he and Paul to uh, come up with an agreement or what do we need to do at this point then? Well, if I, if I could maybe speak out of school, my, my guess would be that if there's a motion by this council to uh, extend the agreement subject to those conditions, that, that Sam would probably be in agreement and he'd have to take it back, of course, to, to his superiors to get authorization, but I'd be shocked if that didn't happen. I would, I would agree with Mike, uh, if I could have afford to, to sit down with Paul and uh, discuss the items, the four or five items that you've suggested here, come to an agreement and bring it back to you, uh, you folks for, uh, for your approval. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. Then I guess I'd like to, uh, you know, make make the motion that they they go through that process to work that out, bring it back to us, refine. Let's see if we can accommodate this. Let's see if we can come closer to the uh, that price point, and uh, and you know Sam can run it by his folks. Paul can uh, weigh in on it and see what we can uh, come up with, and let's uh, uh, see if we can uh, come to some point of agreement uh, to offer that extension. Like I said, the service has been good. I mean, you've had some rough spots, but I mean, every business out there has had rough spots. You've worked through them and, uh, and people are good with it again, Sam. So, you know, uh, certainly don't want to, uh, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, reinvent the wheel kind of thing. I mean, you guys have done a great job and I can't let three or four months of, uh, of issues like that overshadow, like I said, the, the three and a half, four years that we've had previously, so. Thank you. Councilmember Hanson, go ahead. I'd like to second uh, 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 Steve's motion and also kind of build upon it by saying this. Um, the service, there was a, a little bit of a hiccup there, but obviously you've overcome it. And I definitely haven't heard many complaints in quite a few uh, number of months from my neighbors. Um, I will say this, uh, from experience in, in my past neighborhood, when the service was changed from one waste hauler to another, the headache of exchanging carts, making sure that you've got the old carts ready for pickup. And that whole transition was a big hardship to the entire neighborhood. And that was only a couple hundred houses. So I can only imagine what would uh, be as far as a headache to our entire city's residents. So I figured I'd at least toss that uh, anecdote out there to the rest of council. And uh, in addition, another note that I made, I loved Steve's idea about increasing the number of available recycling carts uh, with the continuation of uh, an extension of the contract. Thank you. Point of order. Yep, Councilmember. Yep, Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a motion on the floor, a formal motion on the floor? I don't think we do. A suggestion. Yeah, it's I have just a suggestion, a suggestion. Just to go back and work. If we if we can make the motion to we'll, we'll grant the extension with those factors in there at a 4.0 increase, I guess we could make the the motion for that see if we have the backing of the council and then uh, let Sam say it's uh, yay or nay on the thing. Well, what, wait a minute, the, mo the motion 
needs to, <laughs> I don't want to get too technical, but uh, the motion, and, and Mr. Kennedy is probably the best, you know, person making, he's been carrying the, the debate on this issue. The, the motion, uh, I believe, should be made that we are adopting the contract contingent, yep. contingent upon the following, the following be the 4%. And then Mr. Kennedy had those other issues in Yeah, You need to get a formal motion on the table. I, and Great. I don't think that's been made yet. Okay. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. So I'll make the motion to approve. Councilmember Kennedy, yeah. Councilmember yeah. Kennedy, just a moment. Oh, City sorry. Attorney Halame, please go ahead. Um, I, from what I heard from the discussions and um, Councilmember Kennedy's original um, motion, it sounds like you're really just giving direction to Paul to go and negotiate and then bring back terms as best he could bring them back. And at that point, we would actually have a written agreement that yep. you would then consider for adoption. And that's what I would like to do if that's uh, if that's feasible. You could do that too. Yep. Okay. All right. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. No, I'm good. I, that's why okay. we've given direction to Paul. We've talked about yep. the things to be included. Sam's aware of what our concerns are, I'd love the two of you get together and say, "Yeah, we can do the four point, uh, the four point uh, percentage uh, increase. We'll extend the uh, yard waste pickup through the second week of December. We'll provide the remainder of the uh, uh, recycling carts. Uh, everything else that uh, we already discussed is already uh, part of the uh, the current contract. The other uh, uh, operating procedures I discussed, they, you know, some might need a little reinforcing from time to time." But other than that, I'd be uh, I'd be great if uh, he and Paul would work that out, bring that back, and as an extension, and uh, bring it for council approval at the uh, the next meeting if they can be happening that quickly. He's shaking his head. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all set. Yep. <laughs> are we all set. Is everybody good with that? Yep. yep. Yes, we are. Okay. okay. Sam, Michael, thank you for being here. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you all. Th thank you, Mayor. And, and if anybody has any questions for me, you know, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. All right. Now move on to new business number two this evening. Um, we amended the agenda earlier without making it very clear which one we would go with first. So we will um, appoint our Sem SEMCOG rep here on number two. Mm. Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Uh, I would like to, I, I think we only have one, correct? I believe so. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, suggest that council consider reappointing uh, Steve Kennedy as the SEMCOG rep. Uh, uh, personally, uh, he seems to have done a good job. He's kept council informed. Um, seems like he's he loves to, it. You know, I mean that. I mean, he does a good job at it, and I, and I don't see why we have to upset the apple cart when that's you it. have somebody that's already trained, experienced, and and capable of just turning around tomorrow and, and walking into that position. So I, I would like to nominate Steve Kennedy. I'd like to second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Council Member Dilg, did you have anything to add to the discussion? It's just me saying a second. So, okay. so we have a motion and a second on the table. Do we have any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in a roll call vote? Sure. Kurtzweil? Yes. Moser? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Kivel? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Dilg? Yes. Peltek? <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. New business Mayor? number. Oh, I'm sorry. What we what we also need to have is the alternate delegate for SEMCOG pointed as well. So I don't know if you want to do it as part of this or you want to make it whatever. But well, it's um, sort of like the delegate and the alternate. Okay. Well, we just went through the process of, of nominating the main. So now yeah. if we do need to do the alternate, um, we'll we'll do that at this point. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. 
Uh, I'd like to make the motion to uh, nominate council member uh, Lisa Dilg as the alternate SEMCOG uh, representative. Second. Any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in another roll call vote? Dilg? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Hozier? Yes. Kurtzweil? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Pelchak? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion passes. Um, new business number three this evening, assignment of the mayor pro tem. Council member Kibble. I'd like to nominate um, Mr. Kennedy. Support. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in a roll call vote? Hanson? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Dilg? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Moser? Yes. Kurtzweil? Yes. Pelchat? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, City Clerk Deaton. We'll move on to the budget this evening. Do we have anything on the budget? Okay. We'll now open the floor <laughs> for public comment. Please remember to state your name and address and also a reminder of the two minute time limit. <clears throat> City Clerk Deaton, do we have anyone for public comment? We do not. Okay, we'll close the floor for public comment and move on to the manager's report. City Manager Zelnick, go ahead. A brief council on a few items that are coming before us soon on the agenda for the Mar November 22nd, we'll have our yearly MERS presentation. And in a future meeting, Historical Society will be coming before City Council to discuss their future plans for placing a barn within the historical village. Uh, we're still moving forward uh, with 501 McMunn. The contractor has begun to work on identifying the asbestos and other hazardous materials at that site. This is going to be followed by the material remover, removal as well as the demolition. The Pontiac Trail drainage study, uh, the work has begun with the inventory of public utilities associated with that drain study. We held a kickoff meeting last, uh, last week. I'll update you as the process moves forward. The final report is expected to be completed in February of next year. Ce cemetery grading has begun. They've started the work on the grading in that particular area that should be done within the next couple of weeks and then they'll follow, follow it up with the seating. The WeGo Swing at McCaddy Park, installation has begun on that. If you had a chance to go out there and take a look at the site, they'll be installing additional material and finishing that within the next couple of weeks. Uh, Want to make mention of the hiring of the DPW Operations and Maintenance Manager. We've promoted an internal candidate, Jeff Archie, in the new budget position in DPW. And so we will be adding an advertising for the vacant labor position immediately. Uh, Nate has brought up regarding the Michigan Downtown Association being at that particular con conference. I had the opportunity to speak and present at that particular conference uh, as a manager discussing, uh, assessing, as well as municipal finance. And that's all I have right now. I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of the council members may have. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. Well, Paul, when does, uh, when does Jeff uh, actually take, uh, take on the position or has he already? He will in the in December. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. You, Councilmember Kibble. I was curious: was the uh, owner for One Ten Detroit served? They were. Yes. Yes, they were. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have anything for Paul this evening? Okay. Thank great. you, Council. Uh, we'll move on to council comments this evening. Uh, we'll start with the new kids on the block. Council Member Mosier, why don't you go ahead and start us off this evening? 
Okay, well, first I'd like to thank Lisa Deaton and all the staff at City Hall and all the employees that helped get the election done. I know that was a long day for everybody involved and I really appreciate and applaud your efforts. And other than that, uh, just enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you very much, Council Member, and welcome to the team. Council Member Hansen. I want to thank uh, everyone for welcoming me so much to the uh, to the council, and uh, I wanted to thank all the volunteers and folks uh, that uh, helped to uh, uh, get all those votes counted and to uh, handle the election seamlessly. Um, would have loved to have seen a lot more uh, turnout, but it is an off off year, so that's definitely uh, probably par for the course. Um, Wanted to uh, thank again uh, the police chief for uh, letting his uh, uh, crew uh, come out into uh, the neighborhoods and pass out candy. My daughters are still uh, thinking about it. At least my three and a half year old, my uh, one month old isn't really talking about it too much, but um, you know, you can't keep kids uh, from picking up candy and uh, even rain or shine. So luckily the weather eventually did work out for us. So again, I'm, I'm humbled to be in this, in this role in this position and I'm looking forward to serving the city uh, and the residents of South Lyon. So, Thank you all again and uh, look forward to uh, the years ahead. Thank you, Council Member Hansen, and welcome to the team as well. Uh, Council Member Dill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, same kind of thing from everybody. Wanted to thank the outgoing uh, council, for, council members for their work. Congratulate uh, the reelected mayor and Council Member Kimmel. Congratulations and welcome to our new council members, uh, uh, Mosier and Hansen. I think this is gonna be a very productive group. I'm uh, really looking forward to what we can do and, um, and being po you know, uh, a positive force for our community. I think I'm really, I really think this is gonna be a great team. Um, and uh, congrats to our new mayor pro tem, uh, Kennedy. Uh, also, uh, I also did wanna thank the, uh, our clerk, our office staff, our poll workers for their hard season during, uh, hard work during the election season. I know, uh, there's a lot of hassles in that, and I really appreciate how smoothly it goes. Um, I'm very excited for ladies' night. I can't wait to see the turnout. If um, the downtown um, trick-or-treat was any example of what we are about to see with the ladies' night, I think that uh, it's going to be pretty productive, um, pretty uh, good turnout. I mean, a pretty good productive night for our businesses and fun for um, our uh, the ladies and some of the gentlemen who take play, who take part in that. Um, and I wanted to thank the uh, Ladies' Night Committee. They do a lot of work and don't get a lot of, um, they don't get a lot of uh, congratulations, but they do a lot of work to pull this off. Um, and I know they have to put together hundreds of bags and um, get tons of sponsors and everything to make this happen. So I just wanted to um, tell them how much that's appreciated. And uh, again, congratulations and good luck to the, South Lion Lines. Thank you, Council Member Dill. Thank you. Council Member Kibble. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to thank the electorate um, for putting me back in my seat. Um, it, it's been, this will be the start of my 25th year of being on city council and I'm, I'm really delighted that people th still think I'm bringing something to the parties and I'm hoping I can make that uh, evident. So uh, I, all the people that run our election and the, it was really great when I was out campaigning, you know, when every now and then you'd be talking to somebody and they would, you'd ask them, well, do you have anything that you're really interested in? And seeing that you don't see as uh, being as solid as it should be. And on occasion, you'd get somebody that would be complaining about the security of our elections. And it was really wonderful in talking with Lisa when she would give me an example of what happens when say somebody that wants to spoil an uh, absentee vote. The, the levels that they go to to validate the, that this is a, their signatures all align and all the information is proper it's not a simple matter of somebody ends up turning in a ballot and you end up just handing one out willy nilly. So it was really cool to be able to tell these people, we have a very secure election system. Uh, I mean, Michigan in particular and, and South Lions especially. 
So these guys are, are quite good at what they do and they take it quite seriously. So I was really happy to be able to have that in our quiver. So um, I, I wanted to make a, this is somewhat of a little personal comment. My father-in-law had been the DPW director at Northville for 25 years. And uh, he had also ascended to being the assistant fire chief over there. And uh, unfortunately we lost him last Friday. It's been very difficult for the family, obviously, but um, he was a stand-up guy and he was the example of anything that you would want to be in working in a municipal environment. He cared for the city of Northville as he cared for his own yard. He was a, a wonderful, lovely man and uh, he'll be very missed. Thank you very much for that time. Yep. Uh, thank you, Council Member Kivel. Uh, Council Member Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I would like to thank Rose Walton for her service on City Council. And now as she moves on to a new career challenge, no doubt she will bring that same commitment and dedication to service to frontliners um, and to the, the, the field of first responders. So good luck, Rose, on your continued successes, not only in life, but in caring for those most in need and searching for hope and searching for comfort. Uh, thank you very, very much for your service. Uh, more importantly, Rose, uh, you left a very, very important gift here in the city, and that was your support and perseverance to see through the installation of a swing in McKinney Park, which is for disabled children. So uh, you will be greatly remembered and appreciated for your incredible commitment to those less fortunate. Uh, as to Carl, we will see you riding around town, collecting data on your projects and reporting back to council your thoughts and impressions, which are always interesting and best wishes to you. Next, I would like to welcome our two new council members and look forward to their input and participation in the deliberative process and collectively solving issues in governance that improves the community and enhances the lives of our residents. Uh, to get things started, please call me or email me when it's convenient for you. And I would love to sit down and have coffee or lunch with you in order so I can personally welcome you to South Lyon City Council. So I think it's gonna be a great time. So welcome aboard. Uh, last, I do wanna say uh, thank you to all the election workers. I personally went to the polls and thanked each and every one of them for their service to the election process. Um, I will disagree with um, Councilman Kivel. Uh, Michigan does have very good elections, safe and secure elections, except for Ca Wayne County. Uh, that has become a national disgrace. Uh, thank goodness we are not in that boat. Uh, I have worked uh, very hard behind the scenes um, on election integrity in Oakland County and have had communications with our city clerk on various issues that came up last year in the 2020 election. Uh, to make sure that they were not present in the city of South Lyon. And so that gave me confidence that they were not of um, an issue or concern in this 2021 election. Uh, the city has the safest elections. They always have been since I have been here in the city. And I think that uh, speaks volumes of the management team that has always been in place here to ensure that our elections are safe, honest, secure, and uh, without voter fraud. So thank you everybody that uh, assisted and thank you for those again, Alex and Lori for putting your name out there. It's not easy, it's hard, but you did it and welcome aboard. Good night, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kurtzwell. Uh, Council Member Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically, I'd like to begin by congratulating you on your reelection. Um, you know, it's uh, another two year term for you there. And I think uh, you ended up getting more votes than uh, any other mayoral candidate from the past uh, seven elections and probably well beyond that. Uh, also wanna extend congratulations to council member Kivel on his uh, reelection and uh, 25 years on the, uh, the council. It's uh, truly an impressive record. So uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You still have uh, a lot to bring to the party here, so. I uh, also want to welcome council members Lori Mosier and Alex Hansen. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, some uh, some fresh ideas, fresh perspectives. Certainly wish them well on their uh, their upcoming terms. 
And I know that, uh, you know, uh, they're going to be there to help build on the successes we've already realized and uh, as well as help create new ones going forward. Uh, next, I want to thank uh, Lisa Dilg for uh, uh, being willing to take on the responsibility of the uh, SEMCOG alternate, being there to uh, provide support uh, in that role uh, once again. Uh, it's certainly been uh, reassuring for the past uh, couple of years. Look forward to working with you again for the next, uh, next couple. And finally, I guess I just, I wanna thank the mayor and uh, my fellow council members uh, for the vote of confidence in uh, uh, selecting me as the, the mayor pro tem. I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm honored, okay? And I will certainly do my best to uh, honor that trust and fulfill the obligation of the position uh, for the benefit of the city and uh, you know during the next term. So uh, I certainly do appreciate that extensively. Thank you very much. Two other quick things though, obviously uh, Lisa's already talked about that, ladies night out on Friday, uh, but also the day after on Saturday, November 13th, South Lion Nutrition will be having their grand opening starting at nine o'clock with a ribbon cutting at 11 o'clock. They're located in the King Plaza on Pontiac Trail. And finally, artists are still needed for the Wellhead Protection Program's 2021 South Lion Art Contest. There are two weeks remaining before the logo artwork entries are due on Monday, November 22nd. So please get your uh, your drawings in for the new logo. There's cash prizes available and uh, the organization is really looking forward to seeing what, uh, what the artists uh, can come up with. A residency is not a requirement. It's open to anybody in the, uh, in the state there, anybody nationwide, I believe. So if you need more information, you can find it on the city website at southlinemi.org. And that is all I have this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Kennedy. Um, I have a few things, a little bit all over the board here. First, I would like to start uh, by thanking uh, Carl Richards and Rose Walton for their four years of service to our community. Um, I enjoyed working with both of you and if, um, you know, thank you to your service and I look forward to staying in touch down the road and best wishes on your future endeavors. Um, congratulations to Council Member Kibble, um, Council Member Mosier and Council Member Hansen for um, winning their elections and I look forward to working with you guys as, as our as our team here for the next two years. So um, if there's anything I can do to help, if there's any questions or concerns, I have an open door policy and I'm here for all of you at all times. So um, I also would like to thank the voters in the city of South Lyon uh, for trusting me to lead in a third term. Um, that's not something I take lightly. And so, uh, you know, I look forward to being part of the solutions in this community for the next couple of years as well. Um, I wanna thank Bob Martin uh, for his tireless efforts um, in his work with our concerts in the park. He will be um, leaving that position uh, before the start of the next year. And I wanna thank Bob and I will, I will also reach out to Bob to tell him how much we appreciate uh, his efforts with those concerts in the park. That's it. Those are gonna be some big shoes to fill. There's a lot of folks that really enjoy those. So thank you, Bob. Um, Last and certainly not least, Friday night is going to be a very large night in this community. Uh, we are going to have a great gathering downtown for ladies night out. And we are also gonna host a regional high school football playoff game at the jungle, the 11 and 0 Lions. Uh, we'll take on Portage Central at the jungle at seven o'clock. If you're intending to go to the game, I would highly suggest you get there early, um, especially if we have things going on um, with the road closures downtown. Um, they are also only doing ticket sales online. Um, so that stuff is, is available uh, through the school district website, uh, but there will be no ticket sales at the gate. You will have to get your tickets online. So that's important. And then this is also just as important. Um, if you can't make it out to the game and you want to know what's going on with the game, WHMI 93.5 FM will be at the game broadcasting live. They will go on the air at 640. And if you have not heard the team they've put together doing their high school football games, I would highly encourage you to check it out. They do an incredible job. Um, they are very excited to be coming back to the jungle on Friday. And so if you aren't going to be able to make it out or maybe you're going to take in ladies night and head home, uh, turn on 93.5 and make sure you're following the Lions in their regional uh, playoff game this Friday. 
So uh, thank you for all that time. Um, again, I'm looking forward to working with all of you going down in the next two years. Um, with that, I will look for a motion to adjourn this evening. Council Member Kurtzwell. Thanks, move to adjourn. Thank you all, have a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night.